Welcome to the exciting world of AI-powered applications. I'm Sandra Rogers, and I'll be your instructor as we embark on this journey together to create an AI-powered application that uses some of the newest and most powerful AI technologies. Throughout this course, you'll learn the skills and techniques needed to create a truly intelligent application that can interact with users, understand natural language, process audio inputs, and even analyze images. You'll gain hands-on experience working with several well-known AI APIs and technology. These industry-leading platforms will serve as the building blocks for our AI-powered app. Some of the technologies we'll use are OpenAI. We'll dive into OpenAI's Chat Completion API, a revolutionary tool that allows our app to engage in natural and dynamic conversations with users. DeepGram. We'll use the power of DeepGram's Speech Recognition API to transcribe audio files allowing us to seamlessly integrate audio analysis into our app. We'll learn about Replicate, a game changer in open source AI. We'll use it to tap into the power of an image analysis model called MiniGPT, so our app will be able to understand the content of images and respond intelligently to questions about them. And LangChain, we'll use this technology to empower our app with a unique form of memory. With LangChain, our app will be able to remember previous interactions and respond intelligently based on the accumulated knowledge. Now that we're excited about all the fascinating AI technologies we're going to learn, let's take a look at what we'll be building. It's an app that we can use to analyze content, text, audio, or images. For our text analysis feature, we take a text selection and then ask the AI questions about it, getting a response in return. For our audio analysis feature, we transcribe an audio file into text. When we have the transcription, we ask the AI questions about it. Transcribing it to text first lets us use the same AI we used for the text analysis feature. The AI analyzes the audio in text form. This feature is made up of the transcriber component in a chat window which is similar to the one in the text analysis feature. We'll also add functionality to ask multiple questions to the AI so that we can continue to ask it questions about the audio file. Lastly, we'll build the image analysis feature. For this one, we'll add an image URL to the input. Then we can ask the AI questions about the image. We'll add functionality to be able to ask multiple questions. And we'll give our AI memory so that it can remember previous questions and answers, holding on to the entire context of the conversation. We'll set up our project now so we can jump right in to building our AI-powered app. I recommend that you clone the project and use the branch called starting code, which contains the code you need to start building the AI features. If you'd like to see the finished project working, you'll need to add a .env file. Use the .env example as the guide to what should go in there. You'll need to add your API keys for OpenAI, DeepGram, and Replicate. We'll sign up for each of the APIs when we get to later lessons that introduce each API. But if you would like to get a head start and see your project working, there are links below so you can sign up and get your API keys. Now we're ready to start building. In the next lesson of the course, we'll learn how to use OpenAI's Chat Completion API. It's the main technology behind the famous ChatGPT. We want to give our app the intelligence it needs to answer questions about text. So we'll use OpenAI as the brain of our AI-powered app. Let's get started. In this lesson, we'll dive into OpenAI's Chat Completion API, a tool that can enhance our web projects with the power of AI. The Chat Completion API is just one of several technologies offered by OpenAI. But many people are familiar with it because it's the technology behind ChatGPT. Before we can begin, we'll need to sign up for OpenAI's API and get an API key. Let's head over to the OpenAI website and follow the sign-up process. If it's your first time signing up for an account, you should receive $5 in free credits that will last for three months. But if you already had an account and those three months have passed, you'll have to enter a credit card to pay for credits. Don't worry, a little goes a long way. I recommend you set a monthly spend limit so that you feel confident you won't be charged for more than you want to use. You can do that in the Billing Overview page. I set a limit at $10, but I rarely use more than 50 cents a month. For the time being, it's very affordable. To keep track of your usage, just keep an eye on the Usage tab in your account. 
You can also take a look at the pricing for each model if you would like more detailed pricing information. Now that we have our API key, let's find out what the Chat Completions API is all about. The Chat Completions API is an interface provided by OpenAI that allows us to integrate chat-based language models into our applications or websites. We can have interactive conversations with the model by sending a series of messages as input and receiving model-generated intelligent responses. In our AI-powered app, we'll be using the chat completion technology to help us analyze information we input, such as text or audio. So we'll be giving OpenAI some content along with questions we want to ask about that content. Let's get a better understanding of the fundamentals we need to understand when making a request to the chat completions API. We need to structure our conversation as a series of messages. Each message has two properties, role and content. The role represents the sender of the message, like system, user, or assistant. And the content contains the actual text of the message. The array of messages is often referred to as the prompt. It's important to understand the different roles in the conversation. The user role represents the end user or the person interacting with our application. The system role can be used to provide high-level instructions or context to the model. A third role, the assistant role, is the AI providing the response, which we'll see when we examine the response object in the next part of this lesson. In our project, we'll send a request object that contains an array of messages. One message will be the high-level instructions as a role of system, telling the AI that it will answer a question about the following content. Another message in the role of user will be the question we're asking about the content. And the last message, also as a role of user, will be the actual text content for the AI to analyze. Once we send our conversation messages to the Chat Completions API, we'll receive a response. The response will contain the assistant's reply as well as additional information such as token counts for the prompt and the completion, the response message. We'll need to look at the choices property of this response object to find the assistant's reply. Notice that the role is assistant, which tells us that this content represents the AI model's chat responses. The content property, which contains the AI response to our question, is also known as the completion. That's why this API is called the Chat Completion API. We might wonder which model to use. There are all kinds of different models that can do different things, such as generate art, answer questions, turn speech into text, and so much more. But for Chat Completion, we'll need a model that can do natural language processing, meaning that it can understand and generate human language. OpenAI offers a variety of NLU models, and choosing the right one depends on our specific use case. Each model is optimized for different purposes. For example, GPT 3.5 Turbo is great for general tasks, such as answering questions. And DaVinci is better for complex and creative scenarios, such as storytelling and professional writing. For this project, we'll be using the GPT 3.5 Turbo model due to its cost effectiveness and its ability to handle more general tasks. GPT 3.5 Turbo is also a great choice if we have longer prompts we need to send due to its larger maximum token limit. Since we'll probably be sending long text content for the AI to analyze, we'll need that larger maximum token limit. Since we're on the topic, let's briefly talk about tokens. Tokens are units of text used by language models to process and understand input. A token can represent a single character, a word, or even a subword, depending on the specific tokenization method used by the model. You might be tempted to compare tokens to string characters, but actually, the way an AI model counts tokens is different from the way strings are built out in JavaScript. Both the input messages and model responses of our chat completion interaction are measured in tokens. It's important to keep in mind that longer conversations or responses consume more tokens, and there are limitations based on the model's maximum token limit. We'll need to keep each request to within that token limit. Later in this course, we'll learn how to programmatically count tokens so that our requests don't go over the model's maximum token limit.
And that wraps up our introduction to OpenAI's Chat Completion API. We now have a solid understanding of its key concepts and how to structure our conversation. In the next lesson, we'll build the feature of our app that uses the Chat Completion API to answer a text-based prompt. We're ready to start building our AI-powered app. In this lesson, we'll build our Analyze Text feature using Vue on the front end, a Node Express server on the back end, and what we've learned so far about the OpenAI Chat Completion API. We'll first need to build a Node Express server. Let's create a server.js file at the root of the project and add the following code. Next, we'll install the NPM packages we'll need for our Express server and for the OpenAI Chat Completion feature. Then we'll add the OpenAI configuration so we'll be able to use the OpenAI JavaScript SDK. We'll be sure to add our API key to a .env file and add .env to the git ignore file so that our secret OpenAI API key is not included in our code if we push it up to GitHub. Now let's create the chat endpoint in our server.js file. This endpoint will handle the chat completion request to the OpenAI API. It acts as the bridge between our front-end and the AI-powered text analysis. I'll paste in some code now and walk through it. We'll set up this endpoint to receive an array of messages from the front-end, since we know that OpenAI expects a request containing an array of messages objects. Then we make sure to throw an error if messages is null. The createChatCompletion method comes from OpenAI's JavaScript SDK. It takes in an object with two properties, model, which tells OpenAI which model we want to use, and messages, which is our prompt sent from the front end as a messages array. In the previous lesson, we learned why GPT 3.5 Turbo is a good choice of model for this app. We'll return the response to the front end as an object property called message, which will contain the response content from OpenAI. Now let's build the UI features and the logic on the front end that create the prompt and send it to our server. We'll start by setting up a Pina store so we can better organize the logic for each of the features we intend to build in this project. If you're new to using Pina, check out our course Pina Fundamentals if you'd like an introduction to Pina. However, you should be able to follow along with this course without going through that course beforehand. Let's install Pina with the following command. Then we'll make sure we've added Pina to our view project in the main.js file. Now we'll create a text chat store for the Analyze Text feature. This text chat store will hold all the logic for our Analyze Text feature. It will include three important actions. Create prompt to generate the prompt for the API request. Send a prompt to send the prompt and receive the AI-generated response. And clear chat to reset the chat data. It will also manage the state of four properties, text, question, prompt, and GPT response. Text is the text we want OpenAI to analyze. Question is the question we want to ask OpenAI about the text. Prompt is the prompt built as the messages array. And GPT response is the response from OpenAI. Before we build out the logic for each of these actions, let's take a look at the UI features that a user of our app will interact with that contain the state we are managing with these properties of text, question, prompt, and GPT response. Looking at the user interface, we see four main elements. A text area to add the text to be analyzed by OpenAI, an input to add a question we want to ask about the text, a submit button to send the text and the question to OpenAI, and a clear button to clear everything and start again. In the textview.view file, we'll add the code representing these UI elements for our Analyze Text feature. First, let's import the Use Text store so that we can bind the data in the Pina store to the UI elements. Here's the text area where the user can input a long text to be analyzed. This text area is bound to the text property in the text chat store with vModel. And this input, where the user can enter their question, also uses vModel, which is bound to the question property in the text chat store. Here's the button code. The submit button 
has an event listener send question, which triggers a function that will send the text in question to OpenAI for analysis. The send question function is contained in the script of the view file, ready to run when the button is clicked. Additionally, we'll add a clear button to enable users to reset the chat. Clicking the clear button will trigger the clear chat action, removing all the data and allowing the user to start over. Now we're ready to build the logic that supports our UI elements to send the data back to the server and on to OpenAI for analysis. Here's the text chat store as we left it before. Let's take a look now at the logic we'll write for the create prompt action that will be triggered when the user clicks the submit button in the UI. Remember, OpenAI expects an array of messages that contains objects, where each object has a role and a content property. The text in question will each belong to different objects as that object's content property. We'll also add instructions to the prompt. Since these are higher level instructions for the model, they'll have the role of system. To build the prompt, we'll push each of these objects into the prompt array. Now we have all the logic we need to create the prompt. The send prompt action will make a fetch request to send the prompt to our server chat endpoint. First, let's write logic to check that there actually is a text that needs to be analyzed. Then we'll write our fetch post request, sending the prompt data in the body. Be sure to send it as the value to the messages property, since our endpoint will be checking for data on rec.body.messages. On the front end, we'll display the response from OpenAI. Now let's check that this is working. I'll add text for the AI to analyze, and my question, and now when we click Submit, after just a few seconds, we see the response appear. The last bit of logic we'll add is the logic to clear everything out, so the user can start again. In the text chat store, we'll add the following logic to the clear chat action. This will reset all the store's data to its original state, which means the user will be able to start fresh if they want to add a new text. And that's it. We've covered the key components of building the Analyze Text feature using Vue 3 and OpenAI's Chat Completion API. By setting up the chat endpoint, implementing the text chat Pina store, and by designing the user interface, we're ready to enable powerful text analysis capabilities in our web application. Next up, we'll learn about an API that can turn audio into text so we can build our Analyze Audio feature. To continue learning with me, Head over to viewmastery.com 